Hi, today I'm going to show you how to replace the belt on a Minn Kota Ultera Riptide. I got this in the spring of 2017 and used it over the summer and I really love it. But I got too close to fishing the rocks at night using the, the trolling motor uh, while fishing for stripers in Massachusetts and snapped the drive belt. I have it all apart and I'm just going to show you how to put it back together again because it's not all that intuitive, although not that difficult. This is a drive belt that I had taken out. You can see it took quite a bit of force to rip the end of that there um, because of the fibers inside there. One side is smooth, one side is toothed for the gears. This is the top of the motor disassembled. There's the drive shaft also removed. There's a cover for the trim motor housing. That's the base and I've taken off the trim motor and I'm going to show you how to run the belt because that's probably the trickiest part. Once you remove the shaft and remove the cover here, you do not have to take the trim motor housing apart. This gear goes on here. I've taken it off because this is the gear that's gonna turn all of the ones inside where the belt goes down in here. And that's the trickiest part is getting that belt fed. This is a picture of what it looks like inside. Minn Kota was nice enough to send this to me. I did not take my motor housing apart. This is where the shaft goes right in here. You're going to have to, with your fingers, feed the belt under this plate right here and around this gear. The difficulty that I had is that the belt kept going in like this and it went a lot easier upside down. But if you do it the right way, when it comes in through here, it doesn't come up this groove and come out again. Now orientation of the belt is critical. This is a shaft. You see a groove in the shaft. and. If you did what I did and took the belt off before paying attention, the right way to put it in is a smooth side out. You don't put it so that the teeth are facing out. Also, on the propeller unit end, there's a key that I've taped on here just so I don't lose it. That basically, the belt locks into here and that is held in place with this black housing that I've taken off here. And you can see where the, right in here, where the belt goes in. That helps you to orient it. This wheel right here turns easily. And if you see the gear inside the hole, that's what feeds the belt. That's the large gear. And I'm turning it the other way here. Now the gear ratio is very high. So if you try to feed this belt by hand, You'll be here for two and a half days. Again, the hardest part about all of this is feeding it in. This is the shaft right in here where the shaft goes through. The teeth face the shaft so that the smooth part is facing away from the shaft. I found it easier to load it from the top rather than the bottom. Although theoretically it should be the same in both sides. I think the key is you have to not feed it this way. You have to almost push it straight in, engage these, this gear here. And then the other thing I found is that when it comes out, the end of it has a tendency to catch against this pin right in here. And so that's why I have this flat screwdriver. Once the belt came out, I took it, stuck it between the, the pin and the belt, kept turning the, the outside gear, and it fed through very smoothly. I've already fed this through because it's really hard to video inside here, but here you see the gear again, the belt coming out the other side, and that flat plate, which is this flat plate right here, that the belt went under and around the gear and came out again. I think it's easier from the top because there's a much shorter distance to feed rather than the bottom, although if it is from the bottom, you just don't push the shaft back up into the hole as far. Now that I have two hands free, it'll be a little bit easier. And if you want to really move, it's easier to do a little bit slower. But you can see that way it's feeding through and the belt is coming out the other side. I'm going to do this probably about 10 inches because that should 
Yeah, maybe a foot, because that should be enough to go out the bottom end. So now you can see the belt is through. I have about a foot out the other end. This is the bottom end here. And I'm going to put things together. If this is too long, I can just turn that gear before I hook up the small belt again and adjust it. I'll show you that in a second. The next step is to assemble the trim motor on top of the base unit. This piece right here pulls out and there's a little ring in here that holds everything in place and that just retracts it. I've already fed the belt through. Way in the bottom there's a black cord in here that you have to be careful of because that will block the housing. You know it fits right when this ring here is slides in and there's a little bit of mobility in there but it doesn't pull off. Now I'm gonna slide the sh I'm gonna slide the shaft into here. I've already disconnected the spade connectors which go up in the upper end. So these just have to be fed through. A little bit in the heavy side. And again the belt goes into the slot here. So it should all fit right up in there. I now have the shaft through the trim housing. The belt is along inside this channel. One thing to watch for is when you are shoving through here, when you're shoving the shaft through the channel, one of the things that can happen is it can bind up right in this little plate right here. And not on, yeah, just as, it, as it's pushing up through. So what I found is I had to sometimes take a little screwdriver and just push that down and then the shaft continues to slide right through. Here's what it looks like with the bottom piece all assembled. It's still, now it's locked in place. It won't slide up and down anymore unless you use the trim motor. Now, next step is to put the top onto the shaft couple very important parts before you assemble anything feed the belt up through the end and this piece that you had taken off before that goes right down in on top of this here has to be added before you put these two pieces in next you have to remember when you're gonna hook these two spade connectors up here to these parts in here that there has to be waterproof shielding around it and you had to cut that off to get this apart. So I'm just gonna take some heat shrink wrap and put that over the bits before I assemble it. Now the final steps in assembling the, uh, the motor. So I just put this piece on here. You have to obviously make sure the wires are fed through the hole. The belt can, can go up through here later on. And the key thing I found with getting this bolt into the hole is when you're putting the lower piece on here, make sure these wires don't get pinched in here because um, they look like they're scraped a little bit. And you just don't want to have any breakage in the insulation. This is easy, you just slide this bolt right in here and then on the other side is, is the nut. It's a lock nut and that'll just capture it. The top is now on. I fed the belt through. The old piece is right here that I haven't removed yet. And this is one end of the spade bits, the spade connectors. And I have um, put some heat shrink wrap on here. Here's the old one that I haven't quite removed. It's a little bit thicker, but I'm gonna put some liquid electrical tape in either end to make this a waterproof connection. I've now, heat shrink the electrical connections and put some liquid neoprene or liquid electrical tape as other people call it on there. The belt is fed through. 
You can see it on the shaft there. Teeth side in, so the smooth side is out. There's a there's this little roller here that hooks right into this spot here. The belt comes over that, and this here is the connector that I've removed. There's an Allen screw on it that fits into this into that slot right there. You can see the old belt is still there, and the way that gets held in place, there's another little metal key here. The belt just gets fed through and then afterwards gets cut off. I would suggest probably making sure your measurements are exact because you don't want to have to do all this work all over again because you cut it half inch too short. I've now put this together. The key is in there. It only fits in one way and it locks in like this. This is going to be cut off and then this black piece will be put right into the slot here. The screw will come around this side, fit in here, and I'm going to need both hands to do this, so I'll show you once it's assembled. As you can see, I've been nibbling away at the length of the belt. The right length seems to be about where the assembled piece just fits into that notch there. Now that everything's assembled, you just keep turning your Allen wrench until everything is tight. And then assemble the rest of the head unit. I have not quite a quarter of an inch of the bolt sticking out and the belt seems fairly tight. Period. I'm going to assemble everything and give it a try. Everything all assembled and ready to install on the boat. Alright, let's see if the setup works now. So I've disconnected the ram mount. The motor's in place. I'm going to turn it on. Grab the hand control. Now for the ultimate test to see if the trim works. It's on the trailer, the spare tire is down there, so I can't bring it down all the way because I don't want to hit the spare tire. But let's see if... And now we'll stow it. Nice thing about this is it automatically stows. All stowed, belt works fine, time to turn it off and hook up the rim mount. Thank you guys, hope this was helpful.